Football Manager 2023 has just dropped, so let's get a beta save on the go. Welcome to Glory Glory Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 1 of the Glory Glory Tottenham Hotspur beta save here on Football Manager 23. My name's Russ Cunt today. We are going to look at what we can do to improve the Tottenham squad, what new features are going to be in this game, and most importantly, the first game as well, how the match engine is going to work. So, see from the opening screen, we are managing Tottenham Hotspur. It's self-explanatory from, uh, from, the, from the intro anyway. Um, what we got set up here is the friendlies. Having a quick look around, nothing's really changed from this screen as we go on. One thing you will notice is the squad planner. We're going to look into that in a little bit more depth. I mean, first off, let's have a look at the club bit, come for club information. You guys know what Tottenham are like anyway, don't you? Um, perennial Premier League side, perennial team that's never really won anything. Last time we won something was the Carabao Cup in 2008. It's a long time for a team of this size to be winning a trophy. Aim of this save is to replicate what Pochettino did in 2019. Let's try and get to a Champions League final. Let's also try and win a trophy. I'm giving, up, giving myself two years to do that. We're already in the Champions League. We already have a decent side. We just need a few little tweaks here and there. We'll have a look at that as we get into it. Um, if we can deliver those but before the main game comes out, absolutely fantastic. So, um, yeah, let's have, let's have a, another look around then. Have a look at the finances. We've got just shy of £26.5 million to buy a player or buy players. I think we need a centre-back. Looking at the Tottenham side, how they play at the moment, I don't think they're that strong in defence. We don't have any options. I don't think Davison Sanchez is that good. Um, Leong Lays, he's too young really. We can't really rely on the other three just to play every game. So we need an extra body in there. I also think we never need I think we need a central midfielder as well. I know we've got Benton Core, we've got Hoiberg, we've got Basuma, we've got Winks. No, we haven't got Winks, sorry, have we? We got Skip. Um I still think we need an extra body in there just to create a little bit of a little bit of flair, a little bit of creativity, just to provide uh Sun, Kulazewski, Richardson, Kane, oh, those guys the support. So hopefully we can find someone that's going to come in and uh, improve us, really. Um, if we have a look at the club vision then, the board want us to work within the wage budget. I mean, what club doesn't want you to do that? Uh, sign uh, players, uh, maximum two years for players over the age of 30. I'm not really going to be looking at that. Uh, reach the knockout stage of the Champions League. We want to reach the final, don't we? Uh, qualify for the Europa League. No, I don't want to qualify for the Europa League. Champions League needs to be the minimum for this uh, for this uh, club, for this side. We need to be qualifying for the Champions League. Reach the last stages of the FA Cup and be competitive in the Carabao Cup. Um, I'd be quite happy to take home either of those trophies. New feature within the game is the supporter side of it. So if we click on what the supporters want over here, they want us to play entertaining football, attacking football, possession-based football, uh, develop players using the club's youth system. So, I mean, Winks, Skip... Mason Ryan, uh, Harry Kane, all those guys have come through the uh, youth, youth Academy. We want more players like that. They want us to finish above Arsenal in the league. We all do. We hate Arsenal. Uh, be competitive against Chelsea. Oh, let's just beat them in every game and then qualify for the Champions League. So the, the supporters' um, expectations are a little bit more than what the board are. I guess unless the board is the five-year plan there, but I mean it is this season, so... Yeah, let's just see if we can deliver those then. Let's have a quick look at the squad planner. First, we need to set in a tactic though. So um, it's going to come away from that, set the tactic and show you guys what that is. So we're going to be using three tactics within this save. The main one we're going to be using is the 5-2-3. Uh, we have three centre-backs, one acting as a wide centre-back to support the wing-back on the left-hand side. Uh, two wing-backs, a box-to-box -box midfielder, a ball-winning midfielder. We have an inside forward on the left, a winger on the right and a complete forward up front. If we have a look at the in-possession side of things, we're going to be looking to focus a play up the left-hand side and up the right-hand side with an overlap on the left. With Sun playing on that left-hand side and he cuts in, we kind of want a player to play out on that, on play up the head of him so he can find a pass and put the ball into Kane. Um, we have we have got the instruction to work it into the box. I mean, if we can fight a cross in, then yeah, we're going to get some goals there. Uh, we're looking to play fairly wide, slightly more direct, slightly higher on the tempo, run at defences and be a little bit more expressive. In transition, is we've not really changed much from this from the Gagan press. And out of possession, the only thing we've done is we've asked them to trap them outside. We've got the wingers, we've got the wing backs there, so I think we can do that. 
and we've also moved the defensive line down to standard. It was higher up, but it just compacted the pitch. So I think this opens up the game a little bit more for us. The second tactic is a control possession. It's a little bit asymmetric. We're going with three centre-backs, a defensive midfielder, a defensive winger, a central midfielder on attack, a deep line playmaker on support, a winger on the left-hand side on support with a poacher and a target forward up front. Playing on balance mentality with this one, uh, we are looking for standard width of attack, looking to play down the right-hand side of the, of the field. Uh, along with standard passing, standard tempo, and hit an early cross into the box. We've got two strikers up here. We got the poacher. We got the target man. Let's just aim for those. Uh, in transition, we haven't really changed much on this one either. Um, not looking to counter or, or counter or anything like that when we've won possession. Just trying to work the ball out there. Let's get some goals in. And then out of possession. Again, we're going to try and force them in the centre. I don't think we've got a lot of width within this tactic. So if we can force them into the centre where all the play is going to be we can then distribute the ball out to where we need it the third one is just a mirror image of this one instead of um what would be some on the left hand side it'd be Kudazewski or Richarlson whoever's going to be there uh, that's how we're going to be playing it so I think this is going to work for us fingers crossed if it doesn't then I need to really think of tactics for the main game let's just jump into the squad planner then and have a look at where we think we're going to need players so I mean, Hugo Lloris is a backup goalkeeper according to this. Um, I'm going to change that. He is the first team goalkeeper. I think he's a hell of a lot better than what Fraser Forster is. Um, but we do need to find a goalkeeper for next year. I don't think Hugo Lloris is going to be going to be good enough at 36 to, to still be in goal. I mean, I know goalkeepers can play to their 40 yard, can't they? Um, and play at a high level. I mean, look at Van der Sar, he played absolutely fantastic at his age. But we need that young player come through. Maybe maybe Alfie White can well Alfie Whiteman can improve. Um, fingers crossed, I just don't think he will though. Uh, looking at the centre backs, I've already suggest I've already said that we need a player in there. Wing backs I think we're okay. Perisic on the left hand side, Ben Davies, Sessing Young. Young player come through the ranks as well in Brooklyn Lee uh, Lions Forster. Right hand side, Emerson Royale Doherty and Jed Spence. Jed Spence is going to be a fantastic player when he gets older. Um, so happy that we picked him up for the for, for Tottenham. Um, definitely going to improve us. In midfield, I, I still think we need a body here. Four isn't enough. Um, we need a fifth. Whether we can find a fifth to come in there. Maybe it's a loan deal. We'll have to see. On the left-hand side, yeah, we've got, we've got a few bodies in there that can play. His son, one of the best players in our team. Perisic can play out there, Richarlson can play there, Moore can play there. Right hand side again, we got Kulisevsky can play there. Um, we've got some decent players that can play within this team. And then up front, we have Harry Kane. Um, absolute goal machine in real life. Let's see if we can translate that into this game. So when we get to the recruitment meeting, um, we are going to be suggesting a central midfielder. Uh, a centre back as well, and then we'll look to bring in a goalkeeper maybe for next season. So um, yeah, let's just let's, let's uh, get the transfer window uh, underway, bring in some players, get some meetings on the go, and um, see what we can bring in. One other feature that they've introduced into this game is our supporters group within the club. Uh, apparently, supporters can get you sacked now, so keeping them happy is going to be. Uh, instrumental to how successful you are within the game. This section of it, uh, it looks at who the rivals are, who our favourite personnel are, the, the gate receipts and all of that, that side of it, and also where the fans are distributed out. So supporters' influence on the board is low. As you see in real life, we've been wanting uh, the Enix group to go, to go, Levy to go, and they haven't gone, have they? Um, they also... They're also reluctant to sack any managers when the board want them to get rid of them. So uh, when the fans side want the board to get rid of anyone. So that's why that is there. Uh, social media following. We have 15 million followers on social media. Always kind of expect that to be a little bit more. But there yeah, we go. We have 25,000 uh, season ticket holders with nearly 80,000 on the waiting list. Now if we have a look at the sports profile as well, we have 9% hardcore fans. 36% core fans, 13% family, 22% uh, fair weather, corporate is 5% and then the casuals is 15 Hopefully we can turn some of these cores into hardcore and they're going to come every game, support us and put money into this club 
uh, get more family, get less fair weather. Just, we just want fans to come to the games. So yeah, this is going to be interesting to see how well this goes, uh, I mean, develops as the season goes on. Right, this is a nice little feature they've added into the squad planner side of things. It's the experience matrix. So it looks at our development players, the guys that are emerging through the team, the players that are playing at their peak, and the experienced players. So as you can see from this, our experienced players are both goalkeepers in Loris and Forster. Ivan Perisic is on there as well. Players at their peak are Kane, Doherty, Dyer, Sun, uh, Longley, uh, Mora, Hoiberg, Davies and Sanchez. Uh, emerging talent, uh, the ones we need to worry about there are uh, Basuma, Romero, Richarlson, Kulusevski, Benton Kors on there as well. And then the guys that we're starting to develop is Tanganga, uh, Brandon Austin, Sessing Young, the pair I'm really looking forward to developing this Brooklyn line for Forster, Jed Spence and Brian Hill. So I, I quite like this feature. We can start to see what players we've got that are developing. Uh, ones that we maybe need to move on from like mentoring, training, stuff like that because they are at their peak or they're starting to emerge and we can take them away from that because they are going to be becoming like, those peak players. We can also see who's going to become like uh, team leaders within the dressing room. So obviously Loris is the club captain. Ivan Perisic, he's the figurehead, isn't he? He's been around, uh, he's been around Europe, uh, played in World Cups, stuff like that. So it's a really nice feature. I quite like this one. We have the recruitment meeting. So, Sports Interactive have upgraded this section of it. Uh, it's, it's meant to like streamline how we bring players into the into the uh, into the club now. So you can sort of highlight areas where we need to look for players. Um, if you have a look at where the contracts are expiring, so uh, end of next season we're going to be losing Hugo Lloris and Forster. So we definitely need a goalkeeper. For those positions, looking at the centre backs, um, Davis, is Davis, no, is Eric Dyer that's going to be out next season? Uh, Davis and Sanchez again is the end of next season. So, players we can definitely improve on there. Um, if we can create a new focus, um, I want a centre back, I want a transfer. Quality has to be, uh, let's say, four star potential. I mean, maybe five star potential. Current ability has to be three and a half for me. Uh, if we're going to be bringing players in that are going to improve us, they need to be better than what we currently have. And the ages between, I'm going to say 21 and 27. I think that's a good age. Um, we'll just keep it as a standard priority for now. The other players that I wanted to bring in was a central midfielder. So we'll create a focus there. We'll do exactly the same for that. Um, three and a half star current ability. Potential of four and a half star. I mean, just to cover it there. 21 again for the age and 27 for the maximum age. And we'll just leave it as that for the time being. We'll skip that one there. Uh, what's this saying? They're expiring at the end of the season. We'll deal with that when we, when we get to it. Skip to player status. Brian Hill wants to go on the loan list. I want to keep him in the team. I want to develop him. Uh, the same with um, Lions Forster. Although, we'll tick that. He's a young player. He's not necessarily going to get into the first team at the moment. They send him out that's given that experience. Uh, recruitment focus. We've gone with these. Portugal is what, where we're looking for players. Uh, potential isn't that great there. I would like to remove that. So that's what I'm probably going to do. Although, I think that is just a suggestion. Um, as you know, it's not this there, so let's get rid of that one. Let's have a look here. Um, we will go with... Uh, do 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 else they think we need to improve. Let's go with that one. And end the meeting there. So let's see what they can bring in. Let's see what sort of players they can show us to improve this side and then just challenge for those trophies, challenge for the Champions League again and challenge for the Premier League title. So, the first player through the door under our regime is a midfielder. It is Manuel Ugarte. He can play in defensive midfield, central midfield. He can also play on that left, uh, right hand side, sorry. 21 uh, year old midfielder, three star current ability, uh, four star potential. He does look absolutely fantastic. Uh, tackling of 10, so he's going to hold quite well in the positions that we need him. A um, little bit disappointed on the passing. It's only 13, but I, I guess he's 21. We can improve that. Mental stats are absolutely fantastic. Nothing below a 12. 
and the physical attributes, they are only going to get better at 21. So I'm really happy with that deal. He's only cost us £30 million as well. And 10 of that is now. Uh, 20 million of that is on the Never Never. It's a beta save, so let's just stick as much as we can on the Never Never. Um, we also have another deal that we're looking on in midfield. We're just trying to bolster this squad. I mean, there's going to be a lot of games, isn't there? So hopefully we can bring that player in. And player number two comes through the door. And it is from uh, Leicester. Yuri Tillersman, we have paid £52 million for this player. He's an absolutely fantastic midfielder, sort of player that Tottenham should really be buying. Um, as I said, £52 million of it, I think seven of it was up front, the rest of it is on the never never. Um, if you have a look at his stats, first touch of 16, passing of 18, technique 17. He's a very, very good player, and he's definitely going to add some support and some quality and some goals into this team. 52 caps, 4 Belgium, 5 goals, he's only 25, so good age as well to bring in. Really happy with uh, the signings that we've made in midfield so far. We still need to find a defender. It's proven to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. So, it is opening day of the Premier League season. We are playing Everton at Goodison Park, and the team we are taking there is Loris in goal, a back four of Longley, Romero and Dyer. Perisic on the left wing back, Emerson on the right. In the centre midfield, we have Tillysman and Hoiberg. Suns playing in the inside forward row on the left. Kulisevsky in the wingers row on the right. And superstar Harry Kane up front. The board and the fans are expecting a draw from this game. We want a victory. We want to start off the season on the front foot. So come on, Spurs. All those fans need to sing. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. Let's go and do this. First highlight of this match is Everton. It's just around the half hour mark. They've got a throw in. Perisic picked up the ball, playing it into Kane. Back to Longley. It's a tight bit of space there. Plays it into Romero. Romero picks it up. Hoiberg launches it over to the right hand side where Emerson Royal is. He's got a little bit of space for him to run into. Beat one man, cuts it back. Just needs to find a Spurs player now. Goes, shifts the play over onto the left hand side with Perisic. Perisic's head is into Sun. Tillysman. Long lay, trying to find Kane and can he? He does with the head. It's a good save from Pickford. I don't think he was ever going to be challenging the goalkeeper there. It's a decent first shot on target for us. We just need to be that little bit better. Everton's got this ball. They're playing it back into their defence now. Trying out on the right hand side with Coleman. He's got a little bit of space in front of him. No players really challenge him at the moment. They've allowed him to get the shot off. It's a looping shot which Loris easily catches. What's he going to do with it there? Nothing. The highlight does end. Coming up to the 35th minute. Um, looking at the match stats, it's been a fairly boring game, if I'm totally honest. Two shots for us on target. One for Everton so far. Uh, possession is in Everton's favour. I think we might change things up as half-time approaches. We've got four minutes till the end of this half. Looks like Sun's picked up a knock as well. I think maybe we'll take Sun off and adjust a few things and see what we can do with the club. One minute of time added on. And the ref's going to blow his whistle any second now. And there it goes. Half time, nil-nil. We need to make an impact in the second half now. We make a double substitution at half time. Basuma and Mora come on for Emerson Royal and Sun. We've also changed the formation. We'll show you that just in a sec because Everton have got the ball here. Straight away from the goal kick. Uh, the goal kick, the kick off. Coleman's got it on their right hand side. Just need to put a challenge and get the ball, and Kane's done so. We've got a throw in here for a good challenge from Everton. Uh, highlight descent. So, yeah, we've gone to this formation. You can't see it that well. It is the um, asymmetric one with the right winger, the striker up front with supporting Kane. Hopefully, this can produce something in this half as Everton got a free kick. Ball comes in, and they find the back of the net. It's going to be a VAR review, maybe offside, maybe a push in the box. Didn't actually see what had happened. I just seen the ball floating in. What is the ref saying? Goal review as it goes on. The graphics look great for this game. The goal has been awarded. We are one 0 down to Everton. It's not what we wanted at the start of this first half. Our second half, sorry. We wanted to be attacking and getting the ball on, uh, ball up the pitch. Perisic with the throw in, straight to an Everton player. Basuma's picked up this ball there into Longley. Tillsman was shot from range. Pickford spills it and it goes into the back of the net. We've instantly got ourselves back into this one. Everton won. Tottenham won. Tillysman with a debut goal for us. And what a debut goal that was as well.
Quick substitution just after the hour mark. Brian Hill's coming on for Kulazewski on that right-hand side. We've got 25 minutes to try and find a winner in this game and get an opening win for us. Um, match stats-wise, I guess it's in our favour. We've got a free kick here of Romero. Playing it into Basuma. Basuma's beat his man easy. Plays it into Hoiberg. Over onto the left-hand side with Perisic. He's had to retreat back to Longley. Back into Perisic. Can we get the ball going forward, please, lads? Get it into the box. Into Hoiberg. Tealisman plays it over top, trying to find Kane. Kane's headers back into Basuma. Everton have got it clear. It's only as far as Hoiberg there. Plays it over to Brian Hill on that right-hand side. He finds a cross. It's Kane. Ah, he can't get the ball there. Perisic put it into, into Lucas Mora. He plays it into the box. It's Kane again. Everton are defending well. Hoiberg, big commanding header into Brian Hill. And a shot. He's hit the crossbar and Everton have got it clear. We're, we're coming at them. I think a goal is going to be coming to us now. Although we've just given away a free kick there. Romero with a little bit of a rash challenge on Malpoy. Nothing's come of it as the highlight does end. Throw in, right hand side. Brian Hill with the ball. Plays it into Hoiberg. Finds Brian Hill again. Can he find a little cross? He cuts it across into Kane. Kane slams that one in the back of the net. Tottenham Hotspur 2. Everton 1. We are on course for an opening day victory here. Just what we wanted. Come on, boys. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. Just a couple of substitution and a formation change. We are taking off uh, Dyer, bringing on Davies. And Perisic is coming on as well. Davies, Dave, uh, Perisic has come off, sorry. Hoiberg's got this ball playing into Basuma. Plays it back to Sanchez. Sanchez is coming on as a substitution as in the last 10 minutes of this game. Long lay into Hoiberg. Plays it over to Romero. Holding on the ball at the moment. Just wasting time. Just trying to see out this game. I think we're going to be the winners of it. Plays it back to Loris. Loris into Longley. Longley plays it up to Lucas Mora. Oh, we've lost the ball. Dwight Manil's managed to snatch it off of Lucas Mora. He's cutting it back into the centre now. Plays across in. It's going to be absolutely no one. Ben Davis gets it clear. It's only as far as an Everton player on that right-hand side, though. It's a decent block there. Can we get it... A can we get the ball away? We've allowed that to come in. And the shot's never charging up. Never troubling. Loris is sailing miles over. Last three minutes of the match now. We will have some time added on at the end of it. Brian Hill coming on in uh, getting the assist. It looks like he's going to get man of the match as well for his contribution in this game. It's a decent showing from him. Um, as Everton have got a free kick in their defence. Playing it up into their midfield on the left-hand side. Playing it forward. There's no one there. Sanchez come across and covered it. Brian Hill's got the ball. Who can he find? A space on that left-hand side if he can find Davies. And he does, but Everton have got him with a header. Hoiberg's challenge. Decent challenge as well, but it's, uh, nothing's really... The, the, the challenge fell to an Everton player. They try to play it in the box. Lorry's come out and collect the ball. Just needs to roll it out to... Or kick it out now to a Tottenham player. Anyone who's going to be on it, it, in any space. Launches it forward to our right-hand side where Lucas Morris is. His header is to not a Tottenham player. Everton got this ball back, playing it into their defence. Ball over the top. We need to stay alert now. We haven't been. Demory Gray's got the ball. What a block that is. Yes, we've conceded the corner, but I'd rather that than a shot flashing at the goal. There's going to be five minutes of time added on as well as this corner comes in. Tottenham head on it would be nice. Kane's come all the way back for that one. We've got it clear. As Everton have got the ball, it's flashed across. We've got it clear once again. Under a little bit of pressure at the moment. Romero's got it. Romero should have done a little bit better with the clearance then. Shot goes over. Hopefully, that's going to be the last of this highlight and the last highlight of this match. Maybe not. Loris has got the goal kick here. Plays it into Romero. He's given it away. What a... Why did he do that? Silly mistake. Concentration levels aren't there. Goal in injury time for Everton. They've got themselves back into this one through our own fault. Everton 2, Tottenham 2. What were they thinking? I, I, I guess we need to take that instruction off because playing it into the, into the defence, into that tiny little bit of space where Everton were exploiting it on us, got themselves back into it as they've got a corner now. Tottenham head and then get the counter-attack on. That's what we want here. Still waiting. The fans are cheering him on. In it goes. We have got it clear, but it's not a Tottenham player on the counter-attack. Everton have got it back. Playing it into the centre. 
In goes the shot and it's over again. It's, it's wide, it's over. I think that's going to be the last action of this game. See the ref blowing. We, we, we've given away a lead here. We've given away three points. I just hope Loris doesn't play it again and, and gives them another goal. Come on, Loris, kick the ball. Do something with it. So that's a big lump forward this time. Trying to find Kane. He can't. Everton have got it clear. Playing it through the centre. And there goes the full-time whistle. That's a game we should have won. Stupid, stupid mistake from Loris. I think we'll have a moan at him um, as we get him back into the dressing room. Because we can't be doing that. Especially against a team like Everton. We're far better than Everton. What are we going to be like when we play Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea? Cannot be giving easy goals like that away. So there we go, folks. First episode of the beta save under our belt. It didn't end how we wanted it to. Giving that goal away was ridiculous, really. So hopefully we can get that out with Loris. Maybe not make so many more mistakes. We currently sit in fifth in the table. We are going to drop as more teams play. Um, if we have a look at the schedule quickly, I think we'll come back for our first Champions League game. No, we won't actually. We'll come back for the Arsenal and the Leeds game. It's our North London uh, rivals. If we can beat them at home, great. It's on the telly as well. And then we play Leeds and then we'll see where we go from there. So our first look of FM23 and I'm really enjoying it. It looks fantastic. Um, it's only going to get better as well. So if you guys enjoyed that, big thumbs up on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Um, Continue on with the beta save, the glory, glory Tottenham Hotspur beta save. As soon as the new game launches, we'll jump straight into half star to five star. And as always, people, thank you very much for watching.